Good morning, my beautiful peoples. And guess what? I have no idea what day it is. I have no idea what the date is. But what I do know is I am leaving Uncle Johnny's and I crossed this bridge and I'm ready to do this. All right, guys, walk across this bridge. When you get to Uncle Johnny's over there, uh, it's a great hostel. He's got single rooms. He's got some resupply in there. You know, you walk across this bridge and you keep getting it. So here is me. Got my, hold on, got my bug shades on. Get my pimp on. You take a picture of myself. Getting them selfies in. Got my little bug shades. I'll probably leave them. Somebody probably had to pack them out of the trail. Every time I get to bring a pair of shades on trail, when I bring them to the trail, I lose them. And then the trail provides me another pair. So, uh, we're going to wear these. <laughs> oh. So, I'm off. Wearing my frog talk pants, which, by the, by the way, I cannot stand. They are paper. And I'm just, I mean, they, they're they comfortable. Um, you know, the vanity in me just, man, can't get down with that. Look at that, look at that, man. It's coming apart, like, look at that. I don't even know if y'all can see that. Look at that. I mean, that's, the thing is, these things are $30. Just like, what in the world? I paid $30 for some paper pants. So we'll see how they hold up on the rain. Got my, got me a rain cover while I went home. I don't know how that's gonna work, you know? I mean, it's already looking like it wants to pop off, you know? Anyway, we gonna see how it's gonna work. Not sure. Um. I am off. I'm excited, excited to be back on trail. Loved my trip home. I was able to do everything I needed to do. Question is, is how much leg strength did I lose? Y'all probably gonna hear me huffing and puffing, huffing and puffing. Hmm. It's cool though. Met some subscribers this morning and yesterday. Uncle Johnny's. You know, it's funny because I left my pack with Drew and he had put it up. He hadn't told Cheetah where it was at. So Cheetah was all worried and stuff. And I just grinned because I said, well, you know, I would have probably gotten here, put my pack on, and left on out. But I got to Uncle Johnny's yesterday. And Garfield was there. And that's cool to see people that you started with. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I done took 13 zeros since I left the Smokies. Technically. And, uh, and <laughs> Garfield is 30 miles behind me. <laughs> so, but I got to see Happy Hour again. She let me crash in, in her uh, bunk room. Because uh, they were full and we couldn't find my pack yet, so I didn't have my tent. So that was cool. Drew came in this morning and laughed. He's like, there it is sitting right there. <laughs> so that was, uh, and I laughed. I said, well, the trail knew that I wanted to come out here and be, try to be more social and, you know, not isolate so much. And sometimes the trail knows what you need. And, uh, it provides you a space and opportunity to get the things that you need. And so it was really cool meeting subscribers and just kind of hanging out and talking to people. Um, so I really definitely enjoyed that. Nice to know my different people I've hiked with are not that far ahead of me. Makes me feel good. 
also makes me feel good to know that if I hadn't, let's say I hadn't taken those zeros, you know, let's say my family hadn't come out to see me and I didn't go home to perform a wedding and stuff like that, I might be halfway through with Virginia. So it definitely makes me feel good. Makes me feel like that, you know, I'm doing okay. I mean, Garfield is, he walked home to Vermont last year. And he doesn't feel like, you know, he's going too slow. So, definitely makes me feel good. But, such a, a great experience. Got to go home. Got to walk my son across the, the mound for senior night. Got to see my baby boy play lacrosse. So, for me, it was well worth it. And I think the biggest thing that I have to take away is that I really needed it for my health. My vertigo was just really bad. I had a really bad seizure once I got home after that ride. And uh, what you have to do is you have to rest. And uh, going home afforded me the ability to give my body the opportunity to rest. Let my equilibrium settle. Get back to normal. And... Uh, and that's so important. You know, your health out here is so important. And even though I'm out here and I'm doing all this stuff, I still have to remember that I have disabilities. I wonder if the train comes across here as fast as the cars move. Dun dun. Makes me want to put a penny on the tracks. But, uh, so. Vertigo is much better. And I'm about to go straight uphill for like five miles. So, get to see how my knees do. My pack feels heavy. But, I'm sure those two mountain house meals I have on there don't help it either. Hmm. And I'm carrying more water than I normally do. Oh, and I was able to get a new phone. Maybe my videos won't be so jerky. I was watching them last night. I watched them while I went gone because I was making videos. And, uh, I tell you what, my camera was shaky through the smokies. I'm like, my God. Helps me be more aware. But. Maybe the battery will last longer. I got one with a half a tear by the space. Makes the phone a little bit heavier. But. It also helped me. Continue to make videos. For myself. And for you guys. Oh, and I want to show my angel on something. All right, angel. You see that little orange device right there? That is my Garmin inReach. And what that does is it knows where I'm at, keeps an eye on me, and even though I can't figure out how to make it so that people can follow me and watch where I'm at, I can't figure out any of that. But I do keep it charged, so that way if something happens, guess what? I can hit the SOS button. All right, I'm going to do this. And look, Angel, the popo can find me if they need to. And the EMTs. All right, guys, I am back. So, I don't know if you guys seen it when I flipped it off, but it's a young man in the woods by the track, and he was had a bag. And he said he was hunting railroad muscles, I think is what he called them. And so, you know, naturally, the curiosity in me is like, hmm, what are you finding? And so, he actually showed them to me, and they're like these mushrooms, like, and I've seen them before, they're like little tall, skinny mushrooms, and 
And he showed me how you open them up. And if they're hollow on, if they got stuff on the inside of them, they're poisonous. But if they're hollow on the inside, you can eat them. And he said that he lets them soak, cuts them open, lets them soak overnight. That washes the bugs and stuff out. He washes them. And then he batters them up. And he fries them in butter. About 15 minutes. You know, fries them real low in butter. About 15 minutes on each side. And he said it was the best thing you would ever eat. And he said you find them in the damp areas by railroad tracks. Which is interesting. Because, you know, where I'm from, I live right by the railroad tracks. And we have acres and acres of land and so I can go down when I get home. Man, ain't Joan, when I get home, I'm going to go look in the woods for some railroad muscles. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call them anyway. Railroad muscles. But they almost kind of look like, uh, they do kind of look like a muscle on the inside. So, learned something new about something I could eat in the woods. Which I'm sure if, uh, you know, I could wash them and boil them, I guess, and eat them. Who knows? But well, we shall see if I've run across any. <coughs> when I'm on true. But I don't know that I would eat them because, you know, my look, I would open up a poison one. <laughs> All right, his name was Ricky. It's cool to meet, you know, it's nice to meet some locals. People that can teach you about all sorts of things. One thing I've learned, folks that live in the mountains, they know stuff. They, uh, they have so much knowledge that they pass on to generation after generation that we just don't know anything about them. You know, I guess you can call me a hillbilly. People, cause people say mountain folks are hillbillies. No, they're not. They just understand their location and their culture. Some of the smartest people you ever meet from the hills. Right. Get off here, put my phone up, put my head down, start hiking. Looks like it's going to rain. You know. And that's what the trail does. Give me enough time to get my stuff right. Get out the door. I'll talk to y'all later. Well, it rained. The sun's trying to come out now. Um, I was going to stop at that shelter back there. And, uh, and I realized that I left my charging cable for my phone at home and my C to C cord but for that anchor there's anchor boxes you need a USB so I decided to go ahead and push on I'm tired and I don't feel good but it's not that I don't feel good feel sluggish today. Oh, I don't doubt it's from <sighs> didn't eat anything yesterday. Um, but I ate a little something at the shelter and uh, ate me a pack of nuts and raisins. And so I'm going to try to push on. Well, I am pushing on. I'm not going to try. I'm doing it. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I'm gonna try to get as far as I can today, so that way, maybe tomorrow, I can get into Greasy Creek and get a shuttle to, like, a Dollar General or a gas station or something, and just get me a cord. Um, I thought it was in my pack. And so I didn't bring one from home. And then I realized once I got my pack this morning, 
Well, I didn't even realize it. I realized it when I had my pack. I just didn't pay attention to it, I don't think. Um, and so I left Uncle Johnny's without one. So got full battery packs, but no it is. And being that I'm out here by myself, I don't have any. Okay, it's not like I can ask my tramley to borrow one. And I've hit up a couple of day hikers. And they either didn't have one or used an iPhone. So, I'm going to try to get some miles in. So I can get to Greasy Creek by tomorrow. Uh -huh. I'll be able to go get one, get my phone charged up. So, probably won't make too many videos the next two days. Just because I don't want to run my phone down. But anyway, I figured I would let you guys know why you're not listening to me ramble for 30 minutes today. Whew. My legs feel pretty good. I definitely tell they're not as strong. But. I'm definitely not, not out of shape like I was, but and I had a trigger point in my right quad that I've been working on for like a week now trying to get rid of. Couldn't get rid of it, couldn't get rid of it. So once I got my back on and I started walking, I stopped after about 30 minutes to do some quad stretches because my knee was hurting. Man, as soon as I did, <clears throat> I felt that trigger point just go pop right out. It's so interesting. Usually, you know, the trigger point, you, know, you don't really stretch them out. You push them until they kind of let go. And, you, and then you stretch it. But it was neat to feel it, feel that. Mm, uh, a trigger point, by the way, is a micro muscle cramp. Um, it's a muscle cramp in the individual fiber and not in the entire muscle. And so it was neat to stretch it out and to feel that individual cramp just kind of put loose. I could feel it just pop. I could hear the sound inside my body. And the quad's feeling a lot better. Knee isn't hurting anymore. And so off we go. To get as far as possible today. So. Hmm. Walk till. Walk till it gets dark. Or I fall over and pass out one. Well, it's D's baby boy. Adolf. And clearly, he lived to get high. I know you guys are wondering, like, what am I doing? You know, standing over here at this grave. But I need you guys to see something. This is a dog. Do not call 911. You're his forestry service. <laughs> here you go. I was 5.050. <laughs> so in other words, don't call the cops. Forestry service, I will would. Oh, which tells me that somebody did call Unicorn 5.0. 5, 5. 5.0. 5.0. <laughs> somebody called the Unicorn Police Department, the U.S. Forestry Service, and they dialed 911. And, uh, Adolf, just want you to know, Mr. Adolf the dog, I just tickles me that <laughs> you got some weed plants on your, your gravestone and people call it the cops. <laughs> yeah. Makes me want to 
sit here and smoke with you, but thou shall be off. What's interesting is there's a dirt road right there. Like somebody, I bet, I bet the I bet these dog was over there on that dirt road. Somebody come flying through and ran him over. But he will leave a rock. The the rambling muse. Just thinking about your baby boy. Cause God knows I miss my baby Bella. Random stuff you see on trail is interesting. You know, nobody told me about the, the graves on trail. The gravestones and grave markers. And then look. This is like an old Mountain Dew bottle. It's old bottle of lemon juice. I'm just telling what it is. You know, you, you kids don't remember when oh, two liters used to come in bottles like that. <laughs> you know, I say that like I'm 90. But, you know, it amazing to me how much stuff has just changed. Yeah. Hold on. What I call the old people. You know, they did and gone now. But, man, they used to tell me all kind of stories of stuff. And I used to find it so fascinating how stuff had changed over time. And I thought, you know, I mean, I'm be honest with y'all. I thought by now I'd be living like the Jetsons. And TV young kids, it's a cartoon. And they lived up in the sky and they drove little sky cars. And, you know, I mean, I thought by the time I got to this point in my life, I'd have me a flying car. But as much as things have changed, they still have stayed the same, and they? I'm still driving on four wheels. But I am hoping before I die, I can live like the Jetsons. In my little flying car. Zoom, 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 zoom. With my robot made. Like, like, that's what I want. Is a robot made. And not like that little vacuum thing that comes out and does a crappy job. I want a Rosie. That's what I want. Anyway. <sighs> that far from the first place I had decided to stop for today. Um, I don't know if I'll stop there or if I'll keep going. See, my feet are hurting, and my legs are hurting, my feet more than anything. So, it is getting chilly, so I might stop. I don't want to go too far up. If I go up to the next spot, puts me over 4,000 feet of elevation. And I just don't want to get that high tonight. I look at the elevation when I decide where I want to stay at. Man, I try to leave them 5,000, 4,000 foot places alone unless I have to. Alright, well, I'll holler at y'all later. 
All right, guys. So this is where you guys come in to tell me what this is. Uh, I mean, I assume it's some kind of like sign thingy, but it's just interesting. Um, so you guys see that symbol right there? That person has stayed at Uncle Johnny's. And so, I don't know who that is, but, you know, it's like, clearly, people think that, you know, you can just vandalize stuff. I mean, you got that, you got heat, a class of 21, you got transfer, a booby, they're from this year. I don't know who they are, but it says Nobo 22. I mean, ever who this person is? Y'all know who they are. Man. I hope somebody catches you for doing stuff like that. I mean, look at this dude over here. I mean, that's the Monopoly dude after he smoked a blunt. And that looks like, well, looks like Aislinn's hand right, right there. And, you know, Aislinn is three, by the way. Just so y'all know. <laughs> yeah. It. It's got little shells on the back side and stuff. Looks like a... It's just interesting looking, ain't it? Like there's a drawer on the inside. Man, I didn't tell me how long that thing has been there. <clears throat> well... Coming up on this parking lot. Oh. And this is about where I wanted to spend the night. From what I had looked at before when I was at um when I was here before I had looked at this spot because I figured, you know. Didn't, I wasn't expecting to leave out when I did. I was expecting to leave out that Wednesday. And so I was going to do two days of hiking. And I figured I would leave out about the time I did. And uh, so this is the... Uh, this right here is about where I wanted to be at. Um, and I'm thinking there's... A, should be somewhere around here to, to camp. And I might... Uh, See if I can get a hitch or a shuttle somewhere so I can scoop me a power cord. Because, well, I don't like not being able to charge my phone. Makes me feel some type of way, you know. Um, My knees and legs are tired. I mean, considering this is the... Oh, my first little... Anything in 10 days. That got me some stairs to go down. Hi, Miss... Hey, Mr. Shadow. How are you doing? I want y'all to see how I walk down these stairs, right? But <laughs> I want y'all to notice how I went down my stairs for like <laughs> the last week. <laughs> the first week I got home. <laughs> I'm just now able to go down the stairs normal. All right, well, I will holler at you guys later.